Hello there, welcome to the Football Vlog. My name is Brandon. Today, I'm going to give you my predictions for Euro 2024. So if that sounds interesting, let's hop right into it. One step So Hero 2024 is finally here. I'm so excited. You know, you know me, if you've been following the channel, I love international football and the Euros is one of the best competitions out there. Um, it is a wonderful tournament, tons and tons of big teams. So I'm going to go ahead and give my total predictions for the tournament. Uh, the way the format of this video will work is I'll, I'm going to say who I think is going to be the champions, runners up, uh, semifinalists, the other semifinalist uh, who I think is going to be the surprise team of the tournament because there's always a surprise team, an underdog or multiple underdogs and the flop team because unfortunately there's always a big team that ends up flopping. Um, and then I'll move to individual player awards. So the best player of the tournament, top goal scorer, as well as the best goalkeeper. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the most anticipated uh, category that we have here, at least for teams, is the champion. And this might be a bit of a hot take, but I'm going to say Germany is going to win this year. And, you know, I know that this is, you know, maybe not the most realistic take, the mo not the most popular take for many reasons. Uh, for one, you just have to look at Germany themselves. They got eliminated at the group stage at both the 2022 and 2018 World Cup. And then sandwiched in between those two tournaments was a relatively disappointing performance against England in the uh, in Euro 2020. Um, and then also, Historically, the hosts don't do well at Euro at the Euros. Uh, it has been a long time since uh, the host nation won the Euros or had a you know reasonable performance. But if you look at the flip side of this, in both of those arguments against Germany, for on the one hand, uh, Germany was a very different team. Uh, going back a few years, obviously in 2018 at the World Cup and at 2020, they were kind of seeing the end of the a generation was a team in transition. And then at the 2022 World Cup, um, I don't think they necessarily played bad in a lot of their games there. It, it's just they weren't clinical enough and they had some poor defensive mistakes. And it's, unfortunately, that's sometimes how tournament football works. There was some glaring issues with the team, but it wasn't all bad. You can kind of see what Hansi Flick was trying to do. Now they have Julian Nagelsmann, and I think Nagelsmann is a great coach. I think he's had some some time to really kind of, I, I guess, cement his style into this team. And then also, if you look at this team on paper, it is a very, very talented team. I mean, you still have some veterans. You still have Tony Cruz. In fact, this is going to be his last tournament, his last tournament ever, not just in international football, just ever. He came out of retirement for this tournament here and then announced that he will be hanging up his boots after the tournament there. Um, you also have, of course, guys like Manuel Neuer. Um, but then you also have a lot of very talented young players in the squad, whether it be someone in the back, say, like Schlosserbeck, or someone in the midfield like Florian Wirtz, or, and he's not a young guy, but he's a new addition to the team, someone like Nicholas Fulkrug. All three of these guys are heading into the tournament in amazing form, and those are just three examples. There's a ton of other players in this team. Um, and then the other side to that argument there is, you know, you talk about how Germany has been bad over the past few tournaments and how the hosts in the, uh, the Euros never do good. It's gonna come time that both of those streaks have to come to an end, obviously. You can't keep up. This it's just logic says that something is going to change. Germany is too good of a team to be this bad for this long, um, and it's bound to be a time for the host nation to do well in the Euros. Football is a very cyclical sport, and I think that the time for both of those trends to be ended isn't right now in Euro 2024. Now the next prediction is second place runners up and this is also a bit of a controversial one. I'm going to say the Netherlands finishes runners up at Euro 2024. Um, I think the Netherlands has a really good team on paper in particularly their, if you look at their defense. Whether it be the center backs like Van Dijk or De Frey, 
or Daily Blind, or guys that can play in multiple different positions like Ake or uh, Van Deveen, or their fullbacks like Denzel Dumfries or Jeremy Fringpong, this team at the back, I, I, on paper, is the best defense in the world. Um, I think they also have a very, ta very talented team outside of their defense as well, whether it be stars like, say, uh, Memphis Depay, who has been with this team for a long time, lots of experience, but then also very talented attacking players like Daniel Mallon or Xavi Simmons, for example. Um, also, Ronald Koeman as a coach, as a Barcelona fan, don't necessarily grade him as the best coach, but the peak of his managerial career was with the Dutch national team. He had them playing amazing football throughout the Nations League and then right before the last year was actually because he had to leave and coach Barcelona. But um, if he can get this team to be playing great again, they could be a serious team here and the past results have proved that as well. The only thing about this team I think is they just don't have a top class striker. I think they might struggle four goals against maybe the top opposition, um, but their defense will bail them out there. Now, will that be enough to overcome Germany with the home host advantage? And for all the other reasons I mentioned about Germany, I don't think so. That's why I think they will finish runners up there. The next team we're gonna look at is the first semifinalist. The first semifinalist that I'm gonna mention here is France. Um, France, for many people, is their favorites heading into this tournament. Um, and Obviously, it makes a lot of sense. You just look at the front line of this team, whether it be a guy like Mbappe, Dembele, um, Giroud, who's going to be playing his last international tournament for France, Cole Mouani, uh, Bobby Barkala. This team is incredibly talented up top. That is a very, very scary front line. Um, and of course, Mbappe going to Real Madrid now. It's been confirmed. He's going to want to show up big and make a big statement. Now, where I disagree with the France hype is if you look at their defense. I think their defense, in my opinion, is actually pretty weak and doesn't line up with their attack. Whether it be someone like Uba Makano, who has not had a good season um, and also fumbles in the biggest moments, both for Bayern Munich and for France, or someone like Jules Koundé, who is a great defender, but is not in the best of form. Um, I just think there's a lot of holes in this defense. There's also a lot of guys heading into this tournament in poor form. For example, someone like Saliba, who is great for Arsenal, doesn't play that well for France, doesn't necessarily have the trust of the manager Didier Deschamps. I think there's a lot to be questioned. There's a lot of questions to be asked of this defense, and as a result, um, I think they will fall short at moments there. But because of how talented their attack is going forward, um, not to mention their midfield as well in the attacking department, someone like Griezmann or Rabio, too many, it will carry them far enough, but it won't be enough to win the tournament. That's why I think they will go out in the semifinals. Now, the next semifinal list that I'm going to mention here is Croatia. Now, this might be a little bit out of the blue. Um, Croatia is a team that consistently has done well over the past few tournaments, but no one really expects them to go this far. No one expects them to, you know, crumble and burn, but no one really bets on them to go far. I think this will be another iteration of Croatia um, punching above their weight and doing very well, but unfortunately not enough to win the silverware. Um, if you look at Euro 2020, for example, there was a bit of a drop off after their heroics at the 2018 World Cup when they got to the final there. Um, but the reason for that was because a lot of that generation in 2018 um, was leaving the team or if they were still around, was very, very old. Um, I don't think we're seeing that with the great performance that they had at the 2022 World Cup. Most of that team is still intact. Um, they're playing very consistently, both at club level and in the national team. Their past results have been pretty positive. Um, I also think that they have a good path to the semifinals as well. And you also have to factor in that this is going to be most likely Luka Modric's last tournament, uh, as well as a guy like Perisic. This is probably their last tournament with Croatia, and they're going to go. They're going to want to go out with a bang. Now, the next category we're going to look at is the surprise team of the tournament. There's always a team that kind of shows up and shocks people. Last Euros, there was a few. Actually, you can talk about Denmark making it all the way to the semifinals. Um, Czech Republic was also pretty good as well. And there's a few other teams here and there. You go back to Euro 2016, Wales making it to the semifinals. Um, there's always a team that pops up. And this time around, um, one of the teams I'm going to give a shout out to is I think Austria is going to be a team that surprises many. They have a very good squad, a squad that has been slightly improving 
over the next over the past few years guys that have experience that have been in the you know football mindset for some time but they just recently started getting good I think the best example of this is Marcel Sabitzer. I think he's had his best season of his career. He's been instrumental in bringing Borussia Dortmund to the Champions League final. He's going to be the star of the team, especially since David Alba, unfortunately, is injured and will miss the tournament. Um, you also have to look at a guy like Conrad Leimer, great midfield for a uh, great midfielder for Bayern Munich there. And the rest of the team is still a pretty solid team. I think that they, if you just judge their past performances, I think they're going to carry that good form into the Euros. And, you know, while they're not going to win the tournament or anything like that, they will surprise many. Another team that I think is going to be, um, you know, a shocker or a dark horse, I guess you can say, is Georgia. Now, Georgia isn't going to be the dark horse in the sense that I don't think they're going to get anywhere close to winning the tournament, but I think they're going to massively outperform the expectations. Um, there's there's always two ways to look at how you define a surprise team um, and I, I think Georgia is you can make an argument the worst team to ever qualify for the Euros they're certainly the worst team at this championship here um, they're making their debut and they had you know a tough path to qualification but also a path that you know they got cut some slack at some point it was tough um, in their performances, but some of the teams they went up against, for example, they defeated Luxembourg in a playoff there to get to this tournament here. They're relying almost completely on Kravitschelia and to a lesser extent their goalkeeper um, from Valencia, um, Mamesh Davili. I'm probably going to pronounce that wrong, but I think a lot of people are, are writing them off when this this idea of this this heavy siege mentality, this underdog mentality can really take teams far or at least farther than they should. Um, also, they don't have the hardest group out of compared to other smaller teams in this tournament. And I think, you know, the stars are just going to align and they're going to crack into the knockout rounds there. I don't think they'll get much farther than that, but obviously that is massively outperforming what people really expect them to do. So I think that qualifies enough as a surprise team there. Now, on the unfortunate side of this coin, we have uh, the flop team. And there's two big teams I'm going to mention here. The first team, I think that's going to be a pretty big disappointment at this Euros is going to be Italy, the reigning champions. Um, and this is very sad to see because I think the team that won Euro 2020 was uh, an immaculate team. They were such a fun team to watch. It was a great tournament from them there. But unfortunately, a lot of that team is either retired and gone or it's very old, or they have declined in form. You look at someone like the center back pairing between Chiellini and Benucci, that was the heart of this team. Both are no longer there. Both are retired from football. Um, you look at a guy like Chiro Mobley. He has had an awful season. He is no longer in the squad. Um, you look at a guy like Chiesa, the, in my opinion, the best player of your 2020. Um, he's still one of the best players in the world, but he had a massive ACL injury it took him a long time to recover And while he's still uh, like I said one of the best players in the world He doesn't it doesn't seem he has that explosive nature that he used to have back in 2021 or someone like Verratti He is no longer with the national team. He's no longer in the national team set up. He's now playing guitar Insigne and Bernadeschi uh, are now playing in MLS in Toronto. Uh, Donnarumma, I think, has declined in form. I think um, it just this move to PSG wasn't really the best career mo move from him. And then the replacements into the team haven't necessarily been the best. Now, Italy is still a top-class team, but when you factor all that in, the just massive turnover of these players, also Luciano Spalletti coming into the team, um, no more Mancini. Uh, Spalletti is most likely going to try and replicate this uh, playing style that he had with Napoli last year when they emphatically won the league. But I don't think Italy has that same caliber of player. Uh, not necessarily like the players are worse, but they just the, the player type is very different. And I don't think it's going to be a good mesh between the manager's uh, tactics, his desired uh, style and how the players are gonna interact with that. And I don't think it's gonna end up well. I think they're gonna go out um, pretty early on. I don't think they're gonna get eliminated in the group stage, but I don't think they're gonna go very far in this tournament past maybe the first round in the knockout stage. 
The next team that I think is going to be a flop is ironically the team that Italy played in the final uh, three years ago in Euro 2020, and that's England. Um, England has massive expectations on their shoulders, specifically with Gareth Southgate at the helm. If you look at this team ever since World Cup 2018, they've gotten so close to greatness, but they've unfortunately fallen short at almost the last hurdle or at least towards the latter end of the competitions here. Um, and there's been a very talented core that has followed each of these tournaments here. But unfortunately, I think this year, there are some glaring weaknesses, particularly in the defense. Uh, for example, Harry Maguire has been left out of the squad due to a calf injury. Um, and while sometimes for his, his uh, club team, he's not the best, he shows up for England. And that's just one example there. If you look at the other defenders, these new guys coming in uh, just don't really fill me with a lot of confidence. Um, a lot of t talented Premier League players, but guys that don't have a consistent spot. There's no, there really is no, um, I, I guess, back line that just writes itself like it did in the past. Um, the most consistent defender you would say on England has got to be, you know, John Stones. Other than that, um, you know, who else can you think of specifically in terms of uh, center backs? Um, and then the rest of the team, I don't know. It, it seems that they're just losing the um, the connection to Southgate. It seems that Southgate is kind of losing the, to the dressing room a little bit. I think is make it, make it or break it for him. But unfortunately, I think that Southgate has taken this team as far as he can. Not to mention his style definitely does not match with this team. The strength of the English team is their attacking flair. Guys like you know Phil Foden or Harry Kane or any of the uh, Cole Palmer, any of these attacking players. That is not the style that Southgate likes to play. He likes to play a very regimented, systematic defensive style. And it's like I just said, the weakest part of this team is the defense. I don't think it's going to line up at all. And I think similarly to Italy, I don't think they're going to go out in a group stage, but I don't think that they're going to make it very far throughout the knockout rounds. Now let's move on to the individual awards, individual players. Um, my prediction for the best player of the tournament is Florian Wirtz. Um, and now this relies entirely on um, how I expect Germany to play in this tournament. Like I said, I think Germany is going to end up champions. And a big reason of that, I think, is a guy like Florian Wirtz. He has had an absolutely amazing season with Bayer Leverkusen. Um, double digits in goals and assists, not to mention just the big occasions that he scored his goals or assisted his goals, how important he was to the team game in and game out. Um, I think that momentum will only carry over into the summer, into this Euro campaign for Germany. Um, and you've already seen it in at least some of the, the warm-up matches and the friendlies. He uh, already has um, a, a very strong spot within this team. He can very quickly become the player that this whole team is centered around, at least in an attacking mindset. Um, so as a result, I think because Germany will win the tournament, I think uh, Wirtz is going to play a huge part in that and he will be given the best player award. As for the top goal scorer, I think it is gonna be Romelu Lukaku. Um, and the reason why is twofold. There's two reasons why. Um, you have to look at the teams that Belgium is going up against in the group stage. Uh, they're going up against teams like say Romania and Ukraine, teams that don't necessarily have the best defense. You would expect Lukaku to rack up the goals here. Uh, I don't think Belgium is going to go super far in this tournament, but there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of opportunities for Lukaku to get a lot of goals himself. Not to mention Lukaku is a player that shows up at every international tournament. Yes, at the 2022 World Cup, um, he had a, a horrid tournament there, but he was going into that tournament with an injury and he only played half a game. If you look at Euro 2020, he scored a bunch of goals. I believe he scored four goals in the tournament. Um, he had a very good performance there. Like at World Cup 2018, he had an even better performance there. I believe he also scored four goals, but um, he had just a huge role in the attacking buildup in every Belgian goal. Even at Euro 2016, he was very good. And even at World, World Cup 2014, he was very good. So every tournament that he shows up in, unless he's injured, he has a good performance. And I think he is going to continue that trend right here and become the top goal scorer. As for the last 
award, last individual award that we're going to predict here. It is the best goalkeeper. Um, I feel like this one might be the hardest to predict out of all of them. Um, but my pick is Mike Mignon for France. And the reason behind this is tied to what I was talking about earlier and how France is a very strong team, but the weakness is their defense. And I think there's going to be a lot of responsibility on Mike Mignon. And as a result, I think France will go far. And a big part of the reason why is because of Mike Mignon. They might score a lot of goals, but I feel like they might concede a lot of goals. They might be drawn into uh, penalty shootouts and things like that. Mignon will be forced to make a lot of big, important saves to carry this team far. Um, you know, saves in big moments at, in extra time and the end of matches, you know, clutch moments. Um, and Mike Mignon is a great goalkeeper there um, he's had some injury problems as of late but i think he's going to show up big for his country here especially with the, now the absence of hugo Lloris, who has retired from international duty I, I think that mignon will make a big statement or and at least will want to make a big statement um, to usher himself in as the number one for years to come so anyway, guys, that has been my predictions for Euro 2024. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know who you would choose for each of these categories, both the teams and the individual players. Make sure to type all your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this video with a friend. Follow the football block on social media. But anyway, guys, my name is Brandon. This has been Football Block, and I hope you guys have a nice rest of your night. One step beyond.